Yes? It's also going to be more boundaries. Like if you think of a key, it's actually boundaries. Anything based key. Um, with the central difference to we need to know both the right and the left and uh, W of WI for an explicit key. Right? Whereas with like for an order, for example, we, we only need the up key now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so uh, it has different implications for boundary conditions too. So we will discuss that uh, when we talk about boundary conditions in the next lecture. All right, yes. Right, so is there a superior way of calculating second derivatives as well? It depends on what you mean by superior. So, uh, to my book, uh, superior means simple, which means uh, accurate, and which means stable, right? I mean, these are, you cannot build a scheme that is very simple, very accurate, and very stable. So, if you restrict, uh, if you put a constraint on simplicity, which means I can only access wi minus 1, wi plus 1, and wi, you can show that uh, it's, uh, uh, it's impossible to have a linear scheme that beats what we already have. Okay. But if you are willing to sacrifice simplicity and go beyond the wi minus 1 and wi plus 1, so for example, if you involve wi minus 2 and wi plus 2 in the scheme, you can come up with, with something that is higher than second order. And then you still have to do the stability analysis to figure out, am I, is this a better scheme stable or not? Because if it's not stable, it's not a better scheme. It's actually a worse scheme. All right. That's a good question, though. OK, good. Uh, actually, let's, uh, let's actually teach you uh, how do you show that uh, the scheme we have is the best we can get. or if, if uh, you know you can do better, uh, how do you derive a better scheme? So for example, we can always ask that, uh, yes, we get a second order scheme, but is the scheme the best we can get or not? Well, the solution to that is uh, like this. What if we have a scheme that uh, performs a linear combination, an arbitrary linear combination of this? What if we want to approximate wi prime as uh, a times wi plus 1 plus b times wi minus 1 plus c times wi. Then we can just uh, multiply a, well, no, we didn't, uh, a is on, okay. We just uh, multiply a on this, b on this, and c on this, right, and carry over this a and b and c in all of these uh, coefficients. Right, and when we add them together, we just uh, add uh, them together like that. So, if you look at this, we uh, our first goal is to cancel the zeros order term because if we cannot cancel the zeros order term, we have no hope of approximating actually the derivative. Right, so we cannot have our approximation of the derivative actually depend on how big the value is. It's going to be a very bad scheme if your derivative or approximation of the derivative would change if I just uh, shift the function up and down without changing its slope and uh, any other shape. Right? So the first term has to be 0, which means a plus b plus c has to be 0. Now the second term. The second term is supposed to give us the derivative we want to approximate because we want to approximate the first order derivative. So what should A and B satisfy in order to do that? Yeah, A delta X minus B delta X has to be equal to what? Right. OK, we get two equations now. One equation, A plus B plus C equal to 0. The other equation, uh, A and B um, have a different combination equal to 1. So how many other equations can we satisfy? We have three unknowns, right? We need three equations to uniquely determine that. We already have two. 
There is only one other equation we can satisfy. How do we use that equation? I would argue the best way to use the second equation. If you don't have any stability concerns, if you just want to minimize the truncation error, okay, the best way to use the second equation is then to cancel this term. To cancel the term that is proportional to delta x squared. Because if I have a term proportional to delta x squared, once I divide it by delta x, that's going to give me a first order error. Right? I, I know my a and b is going to be on the order of 1 over delta x squared, uh, 1 over delta x, right? Because that the second equation I'm satisfying is going to give me a delta x minus b delta x equal 1. Okay? So I know my either a delta x or b delta x is going to be on the order of 1, which means either a or b are going to be on the order of uh, 1 over delta x. So, so here, uh, I want to cancel over the second term. So that means I have no hope of controlling the rest of these truncation errors. Okay, maybe I'm going to get lucky and get something higher than second order. But uh, I cannot guarantee. And in this case, I actually don't have that luck. I get a second order scheme. All right. Yes? If you add more values, I plus two for example, then you would have more equations, right? So then you could get higher order schemes. Yes. So if I have I plus two, I minus two, etc., then I get more unknowns. I get... Uh, I, I can multiply wi plus 2 by d, wi minus 2 by e, then I have uh, two other equations I can hope to satisfy, right? And I can use them to cancel more terms and I get higher order schemes. Um, as we show later, these schemes are not always going to be stable. So you have to basically figure out, uh, uh, well, actually the, the more terms you add, the more actually the more unlikely your scheme is going to be automatically stable so so sometimes uh, uh, you can hope to you, even if you have five terms uh, maybe for stability concerns you only satisfy four equations okay so since we don't have time to do the stability analysis uh, uh, in this lecture we'll uh, start from the next lecture to figure out uh, which of these uh, three methods are going to be stable and which are not all right. Okay, I will see you next Monday.